Hello everyone and welcome to my guide for Eden's Promise Litany Savage, also known as E10S. Now, like most fights before, we are going to have a raid wide immediately as we start this encounter, so feel free to put up raid wide mitigation before the encounter starts. You will also need to establish clock positions, which will help you to resolve positioning throughout the encounter. Um, and you will need to establish light parties as well and determine um, which cardinal directions those light parties are handling when it comes to umbral orbs. When establishing those light parties, you can keep tanks separate from your healer stacks uh, as they will be handling uh, their own tank buster orbs. So the first, first thing that's going to happen once again is raid-wide damage. We'll be hitting for that. And then he's going to spawn a shadow door and cast implosion. So we are paying attention to this door here as far as orienting for the implosion. Uh, because he's raising his head right now, we know that the implosion is going to happen away from that door. So we know our safe zone is toward the door. And conversely, if he had raised his tail, he would be doing the implosion toward the door, so we would need to run away from it. Next, he's going to change into his standing form, and every time he does that, we need to move away from him, just as it was in normal. And then he's going to raise one of his arms and do another door. Now. Um, again, this is orienting toward the door, which we are paying attention to. He has raised his right arm, um, so we know that the right side of the door is going to be dangerous. So we move to the door's left. Uh, you can also think of it as um, if the door is north, uh, you're going to act opposite of whatever he's doing and if the door is south you're acting uh, exactly uh, according to whatever he's doing now he's going to do the tank buster which is called umbral smash this puts four subsequent slashing debuffs on the main aggro target, and then he will do either Shadow's Edge or Shadow's Unleashed. Shadow's Edge is going to be another tank buster, which is also a line AoE. Um, so whoever's taking the Shadow's Edge needs to face it away from the group and put up personal mitigation. Shadow's Unleash is a group stack, uh, so whoever's taking it needs to run to the group and put up ra raid-wide mitigation. Um, it is highly advised that if you have uh, invulnerability available, you use it for the floor s uh, for slashing stacks and not for the subsequent uh, mechanic because that slashing debuff, as you can see on mine character now, lasts for 60 seconds. So you're going to need to do a tank swap uh, regardless. Um, so you might as well tank swap when it's intended and handle the me mechanic appropriately. So immediately after I take my force slash, Yuki evokes and takes that Shadow's Edge tank buster again away from the group. Then he's going to do Shadow Cleave, uh, much like many other mechanics we've seen before. Everyone's going to need to do a, a clock positions because he does a cleave out in the direction of each party member and then he's going to leave a clone wherever each party member was standing when that shadow's cleave finishes um, so we all need to 
uh, make sure that we're um, out to the edge of the arena so that our clones are dropped out there because as soon as the clones spawn uh, they will also do a cleave toward the target that spawned them if that target is anywhere near said clone um, and then as while the clones are active the entire time they are active uh, you can't get anywhere near the clone that you spawned um, otherwise it will do that cleave toward you and hit anyone else near you at the same time so we spawn our clones and then we move into the boss and we're all going to stack at this point and what we're looking for around the arena we're looking at each of our clones to see if they have any of these dots above their head. Now first a one dot will spawn above two of the clones. As you can see we have two one dots here. Then a two dot will spawn and then a three dot. If you're marked with one dot you want to be out of the first stack. Two out of the second stack, three out of the third stack. It is possible that you don't have any dots above your head in which case you want to be standing in all three uh, stack mechanics um, back to back. Right. And now that we have our three dots up, we know all dots have been assigned and we can resolve our stack mechanics. So again, first hit, ones stay out. Second hit, twos stay out. And third hit, threes stay out. After that, we're all going to stack at the back of the boss <coughs> for Shadow Keeper. And what this does is it spawns new shadows um, behind your character as soon as the cast resolves. And again, those shadows are going to cleave toward the character that spawned them if that character is anywhere near their shadow. So the way we resolve this is we all stack at the back of the boss, we spawn our shadows behind us, facing toward us, and we run all run away from those shadows. Alternatively, you could all um, stand wherever you wish, and face away from the boss and then immediately as they spawn run into the boss's hitbox. The danger there is if you were standing just outside the boss's hitbox and you spawn your clone inside the boss's hitbox, uh, people may get cleaved by it as they're running in. Uh, we don't want to cause that. So um, I highly recommend everyone just stacks in the same place and then moves to the opposite side of the boss that seems to be the easiest way to do this. We move and we're all safe. Now the next thing that happens here is another tank buster. We're gonna living dead this one. And again the main aggro target's gonna take those floor slashing debuffs and then the other tank vokes off of them. There's the voke. Shadows unleashed so I stack with the rest of the group for rate wide mitigation and that's resolved. Now we have Shadow Servant. Now there are two ways to resolve Shadow Servant, um, both with the same ending result. Either you can orient yourself so that your back is facing your shadow, right? So I am, I am pointed this way away from my shadow, directly away from whatever direction my shadow is in. And I can imagine myself cleaving the same side that the boss is going to cleave. So the boss is cleaving his left, so I know that my left is a danger zone. And once you know that information, you can ensure that the boss's hitbox is not going to get hit by your danger zone. So I know that orienting myself so that my shadow is to my back my left side is being cleaved, I need to make sure that the boss is to my right. So I'm gonna move over here. So the boss is to my right. Okay. Another way to look at this is if 
uh, he is raising his left arm, then all the shadows need to move in a counterclockwise formation. So they would all be to your character's right if facing the boss. So if I'm facing the boss from over here, and my shadow going in this direction is to my right, then I know that I'm in the correct orientation. And likewise, if I had a shadow in this direction, in order to put that shadow to my right, as opposed to my left, where it currently is oriented, I would need to be at the back of the boss, facing north. I hope that makes sense. I've shown you a couple ways to resolve it, but the end result is the same. We want to make sure that there is a safe box for the uh, boss's hitbox. So I move to the boss's right. My shadow is going to cleave to the left. And we made a safe box. That was the tanks and healers getting marked. Now the DPS will be marked with the same thing. And since he's raising his right arm, they need to form a clockwise formation with their shadows, which they've just done. You can see we have, uh, if I back up just a little bit, you can see we have all of our shadows facing to the um, left of each of our characters in a clockwise fashion. And they're going to resolve it just fine. There we go. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is he's going to change him to a dog. And just like normal mode, every time he changes to a dog, he's going to do a knockback. And as soon as you see him lose his sword right there, you can pop your knockback prevention. And the first thing he's going to do in this form is umbral orbs. Now, as soon as I see him start casting umbral orbs, I'm going to put up... Uh, uh, personal mitigation as a tank. Uh, in this case you're going to see me pop sentinel. And then as soon as I move into position to take my orb, you're going to see me put up Sheltron. Um, you do not have a lot of time after you're already in position, uh, so make sure that you're popping your mitigation plenty ahead of time here. Um, and as I stated at the beginning of the fight, um, you're going to need to have light parties for your healer stacks. So um, you have two damage dealers assigned to each healer. And groups will either uh, resolve these orbs uh, based on true north, uh, typically um, having a tank or healer stack assigned either north or west, and a DPS, uh, and a tank or healer stack assigned to either south or east. Um, you can assign your tanks separately from your healer stacks because at no point are they going to need to stack together. Uh, and because I'm main tanking the boss at this time, um, my assignment is either north or west. We have a uh, single orb on the west. The single orbs are the tank busters, so you're going to see me move west. The triple orbs are your healer stacks. Uh, so there's going to be a healer stack north of the boss. You do not need to be directly under whatever orb you're taking. You just need to be the closest target to it. So I move in line with my orb. I put up my personal mitigation and I take it. And the healers put up a little bit of party mitigation around... Uh, each of their stacks. Now he's going to do hat trick. So he's going to spawn four clones. One of them is the safe clone. Um, so you can see here that he has a line out toward the west clone. And we're watching that one. And 
And what's going to happen here is they're going to move clockwise four times, and then they will either move counterclockwise or clockwise from that last rotation. So they're going to end up either one to the left or one to the right of where they're started, so we already know that either the north or south will be safe here. So we count it off. One, two, three, four, and back. So we know that um, our original west target here moved back toward the south for its last move because we were watching that initial um, point closely. So we know that all of us need to move toward the south. He's going to do a massive uh, cleave toward the arena here. And we all need to be in line in this small safe zone at the south end of the map. Now you can also see, um, if I back up a little bit here, you can also see that he spawned umbral orbs. There will be four total sets of orbs, two healer stacks and two tank busters every time. We can see that far east is healer stack, close east is healer stack, close west is a tank buster, and there will be a far west tank buster as well. And since we know that I, as the tank buster, are either taking the most north orb or the most west orb, and we're all in line on the south, um, but by that judgment, uh, I will be needing to take the most west orb, um, which means I'm taking the far west one, which leaves the close west one for the other tank. Now, when everyone's in line there, you just need to be in a direct line with your orb. Because by definition, if we're all in the same line, it has to be closer to move someone who's directly in line with it than it is to move diagonally to someone who is not directly in line with it. So just make sure you're lined up with your orb and it will hit you. After that, we have some raid-wide damage. And then he's going to do squiggly lines here. The goal with the lines that he spawns is to be on the curved line. The curved line is going to resolve after the straight line does so the curved lines will be our first safe zones but we do not move immediately as they spawn because he's also going to do an implosion and because he's raising his tail we know we need to be away from the door that spawns so here's the door we're away from it so we know we need to be on the west side of the arena and since we know we need to be on one of the curved lines, and the curved lines are always opposite each other, we know we need to be on this southwest curved line here. Now an important note here is that after we... So, so he's going to do two big AoEs toward each line, right? First the straight lines are going to go off with their two big AoEs. And then the curved lines are going to go off with their two big AoEs after the straight lines are done. He's going to do raid-wide damage after he's done these four AoEs back-to-back. -back. And because we know that we're all stacked here, in order to use the one safe that zone that's available from that implosion and uh, AoE, 
this is the best time to use your raid wide mitigation in preparation for the next raid wide damage so we stack we put up our raid wide mitigation we move either counterclockwise or clockwise into the other intercardinal and then he does another raid wide Now he's doing four implosions in a row. He's raising his head, which means we need to move toward each door, right? He's going to attack the half of the arena away from each door. And then one more raid wide. Now he stands up, and every time he stands up, again, we need to get out away from him. And then he's doing another tank buster. Now, if you have a paladin in your group, they will only be able to hollow ground one of the tank busters. So you're going to have to throw the kitchen sink at um, one of the four tank busters that happen throughout the fight. Uh, I throw mine right here, uh, so I put up Sentinel, Rampart, and Sheltron for this, and I'm still going to need some heavy healing for these four slashes. And then the Dark Knight provokes off me, and it's unleashed, so he's going to stack with the group. Now he's going to spawn Void Gates. The way this first Void Gate is resolved is everyone's going to move either to their clock position or immediately um, clockwise from their clock position in order to end up in these Cardinal Void Gates. After he spawns these Void Gates, he's going to do another Shadow Keeper. Uh, so again, you need to either orient yourself so that your back is faced toward your shadow and then um, pretend that you yourself are doing whatever cleave the boss is doing. Uh, so, um, so if there were a shadow at my back right now, for example, and I knew I was cleaving the right like the boss is doing now, I know I would have to be to the right of the boss in order to make sure that his hitbox is clear, so I would be standing in the east uh, void gate. And again, another way to look at that is if he's cleaving right, the shadow need, shadows need to be oriented in a clockwise formation, so they need to be to your character's left. We oriented all our shadows clockwise, and we resolved the void gate. Then everyone moves in to dodge those cleaves, and then everyone moves immediately clockwise from the void gate they were just in. So myself and my Shadow Keeper partner both move to the southwest void gate since we were just in the south void gate. He's going to put up more Shadow Keepers, and since DPS were just marked, tank, tanks and healers are marked now. You're going to watch which, which side he's cleaving, but you're not going to move yet. First resolve the void gate. And while you're resolving the Void Gate, figure out which way you have to orient yourself. And then immediately move into position after the Void Gate goes off. So I know that since he's cleaving the right, I face my back toward my shadow. And if I were cleaving my right side, I would know that um, the left side uh, needs to be toward the boss. So I orient myself so the south gets cleaved and north is safe. And again, that puts the shadow clockwise from the boss.
Now he's doing pitch bog. It doesn't matter too much where you drop these, just drop them outside on the outer edge of the arena. Then he's going to spawn orbs and turn into a dog. And once again, once he turns into a dog, it's a knockback. So use your knockback prevention. These orbs are at the inner cardinal portions of the arena. Again, establish ahead of time who's taking what. Um, but since uh, there's an orb in the a single orb in the northwest and southeast, uh, and I'm currently the off tank, I take the southernmost orb. Now he's doing implosions again. And since he has his tail raised, we are wanting to go away from each door. There's only two of them there. And he's going to do raid wide damage. And after that, he's going to do shackled apart. Now your tanks and healers are going to have to be separate from your damage dealers because each one is going to be shackled to a damage dealer and we need to make sure we are apart from them. And you can see I stand a little bit too close here and um, my damage dealer actually dies. Maybe they were a little too close as well. Uh, but then we're doing squiggly lines. Now, you need to be at the um, points opposite from your uh, um, partners so um, the tanks and healers will take whichever squiggly line is north and the damage dealers will take whichever curved line is south but he's also gonna spawn umbral orbs at the same time so you need to know ahead of time where you're rotating based on which straight line is closest to the orb you're gonna pick up So we have a tank orb that spawns south and east here. Uh, because I am currently the off tank, I'm going to want the southmost orb. So I'm going to rotate counterclockwise while the other tank, the one who currently has aggro on the boss, is going to rotate clockwise in order to make sure that they're closest to that east orb and I am closest to the south one here. And s something similar happens for the healer stacks as well. Now these orbs resolve immediately as the animation for this AoE goes off. So you actually need to move into the AoE a little bit before that animation happens. And because of snapshotting, the damage has already gone out. Don't need to worry about that too much. Just wait a few seconds and then move into that AoE. Make sure your mitigation is up and take that orb. More raid wide damage. Alright, and since he stood up, we all move out. Then he's going to drop more pitch bog. This time, it actually does matter where we drop these. Now we're using JP strat, which is what is most used on Aether Data Center for Void Gate 2. And with that strategy, all of these pitch bogs need to be dropped in cardinal directions. Uh, move to the position which is immediately clockwise from your clock position. So in my case, since my uh, as the off tank, my clock position is south, I move south by southwest for my pitch bog. We move into the boss. He's going to do some Giga Slashes. Since he has his right arm raised, we move to the left of each door. And we're safe. Now he's going to do Void Gate Amplifier, which, which means he's spawning Void Gates. And he's going to spawn eight Void Gates here, which means we need some buddies in order to resolve some of those void gates because they each need two targets in them and well there's only eight of us in order to form the eight other targets we spawn shadows you can spawn shadows by stepping into the pitch bog that you formed so we all step into our pitch bog we form our shadows 
And then um, just before the, just um, after we spawn, gra grab our shadows, he's going to do a shadow keeper in order to move the position of your shadows right here. So we all form a line in front of each of our void gates facing our backs to the void gate that was closest to our pitch bog. So since I was south by southwest, I moved to the um, southwest void gate, and then my partner is the pitch bog that was west by southwest. So you can see we've made a line in front of each void gate. We're facing our backs toward each void gate to make sure that our shadows spawn in them. After we spawn our shadows, everyone moves clockwise to the um, melee void gate that is immediately clockwise from their inner cardinal one. And then before we move to the next void gate, everyone stands still for a second to drop their puddles. Drop your puddles in between each of these void gates, and then we move clockwise to the new void gate. Now, you can see right now he's casting Shackled together. And much like you would imagine, um, since we needed to be away from each other for Shackled Apart, we need to be near our partner for Shackled Together. Now, JP's strategy calls for each of the damage dealers here to move to their tank or healer partner, but you could just as easily have each of your tanks or healers move to your damage dealer partner. Whatever you want to do, as long as everyone's on the same page, this mechanic will resolve just fine. So we get our shackles, DPS move to tanks and healers, and we've resolved each of the void gates. Now that mechanic can be solved um, similarly if, uh, uh, if you have range handle the inner cardinal void gates with their um, uh, so range would move to the inner cardinal void gates, spawn their shadows there, then move clockwise to the next inner cardinal void gate, and melee would do something similar with their void gates. It can be handled just as easily. The problem handling it that way is uh, A, there's a lot more movement, and B, uh, with the shadows being very close to melee, there's higher chance that they might get cleaved by their own shadow. Um, uh, whichever way you do it, uh, it'll work out just fine. I will mention that JP strategy is what's used most often in party finder groups on Aether Data Center. So he's doing another Umbral Smash here, which once again is the Tank Buster. We're using Living Dead for this one. Because this is Shadow's Edge, I put up personal mitigation and face it away from the group. Then he's going to spawn more Umbral Orbs and turn into a dog. Which once again means knockback prevention. I look quickly for my orb, I get in front of it. Personal mitigation. And then he's going to do three raid wides followed by Enrage. So just mitigate appropriately and D DPS him down. Doom Arc is the Enrage, but we're going to kill him before that. That is the fight, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like what you see, like, comment, and subscribe. There will be uh, more guide videos in the future as I continue to get down the 5.4 content uh, in my Savage Pugs. Um, I also stream on Twitch regularly for um, 
Savage and Extreme content uh, pug rating. Um, and I have included a complete version of the fight with callouts for your viewing pleasure. Thank you. Incoming. First up, Raybot. Hollow ground is up. Tier Claw. Back. One's out. Two's out. Three's out. And Sack. Tank Busters, it's going to be Living Death. Unleash Stack. Attacking left. Attacking right. Next is not back. Not back for engine. Next is orbs. It's going to be north or south. South. Next is Raid Watch. Beautifully done, go.
Okay, raid wipe. East. South. North. West. Trade what? Out. Kitchen sink. Stack. It's on DPS. Second thoughts. He's attacking right. He's attacking right again. Drop your bomb. Orbs in the knockback. Okay. West, then south. Raid one. Shackle apart. South. Out. Drop your bog. All right, north. And then west. And then south. And then east. Grab your clone. Corners. Clockwise. Drop puddles. Clockwise. 
Remember, DPS is gonna move. DPS move. Good job. Alright, this is Living Dead. Tank Buster. Orbs. And then knockback. Trade wide. Third boss. There's going to be another raid wide. Fucking got it, guys. Thank you. We fucking got it. Good job.